I could see most of the changes going on in the country, had a fairly good view of what was going on with the dissatisfaction in the country, chance to adjust to what was going on. So the transition for me in that short period was fairly simple. Uh, again, because the folks that had gone before me had endured all the torture and all the harsh treatment, and by then world opinion had changed things. I had a fairly easy time of it there. So the adjustment was not as great for me. I did, as Bud said, learn some profound things about both sides as far as what's good, what's bad. And I think the biggest thing I came out of there with is there's nothing critical in life anymore. Move on, take things one day at a time. It's that perspective. Yes. Did you want to add something to that? Yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, thing here to have Tony, who had a shorter uh, opinion, uh, experience than, than the rest of us. And there is among our group those who came down later who kind of were a little shy to associate with us sometimes because they figure, you know, well, I'm just a new guy. I wasn't there very long. You know, Tony's case, about seven or eight months. Wrong. Five minutes makes you an old pro. And I guarantee on to you that every one of us who were there for six, seven, or eight years uh, has nothing but the greatest uh, uh, fidelity and association with the guys who were there a little bit later. Um, on the physical side, I think I'm, I'm probably pretty typical, you know, I lost 66 pounds in jail. Uh, the good news is I didn't put it all back on. Uh, other side of that too is uh, back in those days, the old technology ejection seats were like a 21G uh, cannon shell ride. I used to be a little over an inch taller than I am now. Uh, just a compression fracture and I broke our back, so one of those things. Uh, again, on the physical side, yes, uh, we euphemistically refer to it as uh, abuse. But the Vietnamese did use physical means to extract what they thought was a desired outcome. So uh, a lot of things like uh, shoulder dislocations are pretty common with us now. Uh, sleeping on a concrete bunt for six years uh, has a lot of hip problems and things like that. So a lot of the um, uh, damage is, is, so to say, just now coming out in terms of long care uh, structural uh, stuff. Emotionally, you know, you got to understand, I don't think any of us volunteered to become a POW. You know, and so when you look at us now and, and people look at us and say, gee, I could never do that. How did you do it? Well, the fact of the matter is, is we were not specially trained to go become prisoners of war in North Vietnam. We were merely products of the society and of the training that everybody in uniform got. Anybody would have performed exactly the same way we did. Some good, some bad, but we kept faith. And so I think it's important to understand, you know, we're nothing special not even really different other than the fact that we had, as uh, Captain Denton said, the opportunity to serve under a most unusual circumstance. Um, the, the return, uh, Dr. Surley talked about the return of the Vietnam veteran. Yeah, when we came home, we were heroes. Again, not because we were different, but because the perspective that the nation had, for one reason or another, had finally changed. And so if there's anything that we, as individuals and as a group feel today, it comes at the bottom of the POW MIA flag, and it's, you are not forgotten. We were the lucky ones who were afforded the privilege by God or anybody else to come home, to have that opportunity to be welcomed home. And at the same time, I think we all spend a lot of time at VA centers with veteran groups, Vietnam veteran groups saying, hey folks, you know, this isn't about Bud Day, Jack Fellows, or, uh, or Myron or anybody else or Ed McEnbire. It's about you, it's about us. And so, you know, it's, uh, like Dr. Sorley said, you know, if we have a mission now, it's to remember those who were not privileged to come home and at the same time to deflect some of the attention we get to all those who very honorably served in Vietnam. I would like to also say that I, I don't feel like these men and their unique experience and the lessons they have learned have been used enough by, by today's military. They go out and talk about how they survived the experience, but there's not enough emphasis in my opinion as to how they readjusted to life afterwards. And today, you know, there are many, many veterans who are coming home who are 
diving right back into, into civilian life. And we know, we know that the military is an increasingly isolated part of our society and a smaller and smaller part of our society. So they are being brought back into civilian life with peers who have absolutely no idea what they went through. And I think these men can really serve as, as inspiration, instruction, and, and just someone who's gone before. So let me ask one more question for, um, actually we'll save that last question, the political question for you. But how about Captain Fellows? I was wondering if you could, you told me a story when I interviewed you about greeting your, your youngest son when you came home. Uh, Captain Fellows has how many children? Four. Four. And I, they're my wife's children. Oh, they are your wife's yeah, children? They're, they're very old, and I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to direct this question to, to Captain Fellows because there were incredible changes that happened and occurred in our country during the time these men were gone. I call it the Rip Van Winkle effect. They may have another term for it. But how did you react to the changes that had occurred both in our military and our culture while you were gone? And how did these changes affect you and your country and how did you react and adjust to it? Me? Yes. Uh, there's an expression that says it's not who you know but what you know and that's a bunch of garbage. In my case, it was who I knew, and I knew these guys. I knew 680 plus prisoners who had the same goal, and that was to support each other and take care of each other. So when I came out, I came out with this sense of uh, togetherness as a group. So if, if you had something nasty to say to me, it probably didn't even register, because I had something good coming out of it. Uh, I think the thing that kept us surviving, I moved in with Bud Day on one s strange day. He's, he was a legend because of what he'd been through. And I walked in there and said, what in the hell am I doing here? Uh, at which time Bud told me that he was married to Doris Day. <laughs> and I looked at him and said, God, he can't even give me a straight answer on the first day. <laughs> Well, I found out he was married to Doris Day, but this Doris Day was far more beautiful, even though the other one is beautiful, far more beautiful, and she's a real Doris Day. What I developed out of this whole thing is a sense of humor. And I can tell you, we've lost it. And we're not going anywhere in this society till we get it back. For example, we just went through the most horrific, mind-boggling election I could ever imagine. I can't imagine calling Ed Meckenbeyer a liar, a cheat, and a thief, and then the next day we shake hands and we fight to work together. It's not the way it operates. We, what this country should do, if you, what do you want my opinion, is to listen to these guys. These guys know how to get along. These guys know how to survive, and the most Basic instinct of all, I think, is his opinion, is survival. When you get out in the street, I used to teach midshipmen midship and say, uh, what'd you miss most? And I said, water at first, and then food, and they all giggled, and you missed sex. No, I didn't. That was the last thing on my mind when I'm trying to survive, honestly. I just think that this group knows more collectively than this entire country because they know how to survive, they know how to take care of each other, they know how to support each other. Never one day did I go through that imprisonment that I didn't feel Bud Day's strong arm on me or Ed Meckenbauer or Colonel Morris over there, right, all helping me. 